You know, you have to be trained and conditioned to go into space. You have to be trained and conditioned to go into the deep jungles. You have to be trained and conditioned to explore the mountains and to explore the oceans. There are things lurking in the depths of our waters that you only see in science fiction movies. Now, a story came out not too long ago for anyone that wanted to listen. A group of Russian scientists drilled into the ice of Antarctica. And as they drilled deeper, they noticed that the ice they were drilling through was changing. It was different. They concluded that there must be a body of liquid water underneath the ice. And after some debate, they decided to go forward with the dig, only to find that their speculations were true. They found a lake, a very large, warm lake, Lake Vostok. Now, it wasn't enough to just pull up samples from this lake. No, they wanted to send down divers. So they constructed a one-man elevator and lowered a team of scientists, one at a time, into the watery deep. Now, it was formally stated that the divers did not find much of anything down there until one of the scientists came forward and made his claims that they did indeed find something. And that something cost the lives of at least two of his colleagues. Organism 46B. A very unique, very aggressive, very large, and very intelligent 14-armed cephalopod, or octopus. It was said that Putin covered this up to weaponize the venom of the creature, a venom that could cause paralysis at a considerable distance. The whistleblower went on to say how this thing could take on a humanoid shape to mimic a diver, and that it was able to rip one of his team members into pieces. Now the reason I bring this up is because isn't it interesting that they keep trying to push this idea of these animals being some type of alien monster? They just released the movie Life, a film about a space octopus. Just look at the movie Monsters or War of the Worlds. Are they trying to tell us something? Or are they just using these animals because they look creepy with their multiple arms and bulbous alien-like heads? You know, it is amazing that we are still learning about octopuses and other cephalopods. Yet at the same time, we have taken it upon ourselves to have these things as pets and eat them. Science doesn't know everything about these animals, yet people are eating them. After witnessing people do this, why would any alien in their right mind make themselves known to us? I mean, who would look at an alien gray and think, you know what, that little guy looks tasty? People would. They're crazy. Go look in the aisles of your local supermarket. People will eat anything. And they certainly would have no problem serving up some fried ET fingers for lunch. All jokes aside, I'm going to show you some things you may not have been aware of as I point your attention to the watery deep to take a closer look at these deep sea aliens. Cephalopods fall into the category of mollusks. They are the largest and the most intelligent. According to our fossil records, they are of the oldest life forms on the planet, going back relatively 500 million years. Now, many of the fossils found that are dated to be this old are of nautiloids and ammonoids. These fossils come in several sizes. The largest nautiloid fossil measures about 8 feet as the largest ammonoid fossil measures 8 feet 6 inches in diameter. This is just to give you an idea of the potential of these creatures. During that time we are talking about thousands of different species of cephalopods. Today it's closer to 800, which consists of mainly squids, octopuses, nautilus, cuttlefish, and ammonoids. Now the octopus is quite special. 
for many reasons. First, they are the most intelligent of all invertebrates. They can learn through observation, possessing the problem-solving skills of a five-year-old child. They can use tools. They have a great memory and can even express a lasting resentment towards an individual as they display different individual personalities. There are about 300 known species of octopus, and they are all venomous. These poisons are found in the hard beak of the octopus. However, it is the blue ring octopus's venom that is deadly to humans. They are born orphaned, and so they grow up learning everything on their own or by mimicking other octopuses. They have three hearts and nine brains, and they can frequently edit their own genes, giving them the ability to adapt to their environment very quickly. They can also, of course, change their body's texture, shape, color, and brightness. They have no skeleton and are mostly muscle, so they can squeeze through small openings no smaller than its eye. The cellular structure of these animals is very complex, having a genome almost as large as that of a human being as well as having some 33,000 protein coding genes, exceeding the 25,000 found in humans. Now what makes this creature alien-like is that it has hundreds of genes that cannot be linked to any other animal. Genes particularly associated with the suckers, skin, and brain. Its nervous system is also complex as the majority of neurons are found in the nerve cords of its arms. This allows the octopus to lose an arm, and the arm will still try and catch food while it's no longer attached to the octopus. They can also shed an arm if it is somehow trapped or caught by a larger predator. There are a few things I find particularly interesting about these creatures. One, they have copper-based blue blood. Two, they spit out melanin, which makes up the ink of the octopus and other cephalopods. And three... There are species that can surface and crawl on land. Now, these animals do not live very long. They have an average lifespan of six months to two years. However, there are species such as the giant Pacific octopus that have a lifespan of three to five years. Now, these are the big boys. They average in at around 110 pounds with a 14 to 16 foot arm span. However, there is a record of a specimen with an arm span over 30 feet and a weight of over 600 pounds, which is quite monstrous. Speaking of monsters, we have these things called squids. Now they are a bit different. Octopuses live in dens as squids live in the open water, so their bodies are more streamlined for swimming. They do have eight arms, but they also have two tentacles to catch prey. Octopuses are loners, but many species of squids do swim in schools, and will use this to their advantage when attacked by a predator. The octopus eats off the ocean floor and likes to catch its prey by attacking from above, but the squid likes to come from underneath and pull its prey down deeper into the water. Squids also get bigger than octopuses, much bigger. There is the giant squid, and the largest on record has a length close to 43 feet. And then there is the colossal squid, or sometimes known as the Antarctic Cranch Squid. A more heavier set squid than the giant squid with a length of up to 46 feet, which is the length of a small yacht. I could see how the old Kraken tales could have been an exaggerated truth, as there are cases of octopuses crawling aboard ships to get at their supply of crabs. Could a multi-armed giant cephalopod crawl aboard a small ship with the same intention? I could see how that would be a story worth telling. You see, we don't really know what's out there, in the deep. And trust me, you may not want to know. This is the Magna Pena, or Big Fin Squid. Yes, this is a real animal. Now you may have never heard of this species before, simply because we know very little about it. These are deep sea creatures that are found several thousand feet deep and running into them is rare. They are fairly large with a length of over 20 feet. Their arms drag underneath them close to the ocean floor in hopes of entangling their prey. Now, 
These animals do not concern me. What concerns me is the amount of radiation spewing into the Pacific. You see, the U.S. experimented with radioactive gigantism back in the 50s on plants. They found that high concentrations of radiation would cause rapid growth and gigantism. Are you with me so far? Now, there is a lot of lead in the Earth's crust. And if you go back in time, that lead was once uranium. Now, the alpha particle emitting uranium-238 has a half-life of over 4.4 billion years. But it decays into several radioactive elements before it becomes uranium-234. Uranium-234 has a half-life around 245,000 years. Then it goes through a number of decays before it becomes lead-206, which is stable and no longer radioactive. So here is the hypothesis that should get you thinking. If you look at all the lead 206 that exists today, it was only 245,000 years ago when that lead was once uranium-234. From that point, going back in time, just one day, you have uranium-238, which at that point in time has been around for billions of years. Now if you look at the fossil record, you can see that prehistoric giant animals existed right around the time uranium-238 was still abundant. If you have a high oxygen, high carbon due to volcanoes, highly radioactive environment, what do you think it would do to animals that have a higher resistance to radiation such as certain bugs and insects, reptiles and cephalopods? Now look at where we are today with Fukushima and the increase in volcanism. There has already been claims of mutations and mass die-offs of marine life. And it's not just Fukushima and volcanoes, folks. If we keep going in the direction we are going, I would not be surprised if we start seeing the very things that we put up on the big screen. Oh, we have some exciting times ahead of us. And I truly hope that a hypothesis such as this is nothing more than that. But, even if the real sea monsters do not surface, it seems that NASA has plans to make that happen anyway. Can anyone tell me why NASA needs to explore the oceans of Europa using a robotic squid? I can't make this stuff up, folks. They actually want to build a soft robotic rover that resembles a squid with tentacles. We truly are living in some sci-fi action thriller, folks. Is this real? Whatever your thoughts are about this, I can assure you there are scarier monsters than those that come from outer space or the sea. And those are the monsters that run our streets, destroy our environment, and share in the governing of humanity.